That's how we do it, bro. Yes, yes, sir. Damn it. Oh, we been running around all week, man. <laughs> Two fellas hop in the pickup and travel the country hunting white-tailed deer. This is Buck Truck. South Dakota, not typically thought of as a whitetail state. However, there are a few around. Tyler and I are here a day early so we can get behind the glass and drive some roads to see if we can locate some bucks. This is our full scout day, morning before opening day. The past few years were luscious and green, but this year drought severely struck the plain states and it appears things have changed. This is the closest spot to corn over here too. With scarce natural food sources and limited cover, Water sources seem like they may be the ticket in the current dry conditions. On that note, our friend Tony Peterson, who has killed many bucks while bow hunting water holes, is headed our way. We're in a Lamborghini. Yeah, it's a uh, red. Oh, nice. KC and I are about to meet up with Tony to strategize and put together a game plan for the days to come. Did you find any deer this morning or what? A few, you saw a decent buck. Did you? Yep, we did. You know, you're the king of water. And we Dude, think it's they, so dry. I know. It's going to work it's great. Gonna work, I know. It's going to be sick. Yep. It's going to be perfect. So I haven't been out here in a few years, and some of the water that I drove by is gone. Yeah. So it's going to be water and where there's not freaking cows. Yeah. You know. Uh, I guess we'll just stay in touch. Yeah. If you're finding some stuff that's real sick or vice versa, we'll just be in touch about that, and uh, we can move and be mobile at any time. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I got all my camping stuff. If I, if I find something good on that stuff that's just south of here, I'm just going to camp there. And I'll let you know, because I should have reception there, and then if I don't, I'm just going to keep going south. Yeah. All right, we cool. Go, Let's we get you on the road, man. Yeah. 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 So we're actually uh, in a church right now, which is kind of cool. We have a local pastor here that we met last year that's like offered us to stay in this part of the church. Uh, it's anyway. a little more comfortable than what we're used to uh, camping and stuff, but we will take it. Backstory on the bow situation. Ooh, uh, uh, <laughs> uh We were processing deer, cleaning deer out there, and I had my bow sitting on the ground, and the rats chewed through the, str the string that engages my rest. So I had to build one out of a fishing stringer. So now we get to go test and see if it's hidden. Working. After the bow debacle, we've got limited time to go do some scouting this evening. See, I didn't mark him last night, but that's very close to where he was. I am headed to a place that Tyler saw a buck yesterday evening. The deer are out running around early this morning, and I am feeling pretty froggy about this hunt.
his thing and just know he's over here to hunt. I burned rubber midday to go meet Tony. We talked a little strategy and I got the stuff I needed to fix my bow. We gotta run down there. Sounds good. All right, good luck. Bro. Thanks, man. Sometimes it pays to know a guy. Finally, I have the right materials to get this fix done so I can renew confidence in my bow setup. Tonight, Tyler and I are going in, making some knowledgeably aggressive moves and are gonna get in on some big bucks. Go this way, shoot deer down in here, right? Go that way, shoot deer in that one, and then go up on, kind of on top, and still be hidden enough that I can shoot deer that come up to me in the farthest drainage. It's gonna be a while before we see deer, I gotta believe, because it's hot. The sun's really high still. Buck's going after that doe. He's walking right at her. Gosh, he's big. Yeah, I think he's gonna go get water. That's like the very tail end of the creek right there where the water stops. <laughs> What's up? It's all big buck. <laughs> Woo, how big? Pretty big, like 130, 140 top. Oh, that's big. 
What's up, man? What's happening, dude? I saw a toad, man. I'm just telling you right now, like I'm 95% sure he went went to water there. So I think we're gonna watch him in the morning and maybe tomorrow afternoon again, and then hopefully we'll have some kind of a pattern to make a play, you know? But what'd you see? Uh, we had a little buck come into water and then two does come into water, and then we saw one other doe. So it felt good to have three deer within 20 yards at one point. Yeah. So yeah. There was a wow. lot of a lot of venison walking around there that we gave a pass to on day one, but <laughs> I wanted yeah. I wanted to shoot. Yeah. But we won't have reception in the morning down in that okay. bo bottom. But we'll probably do the same thing. Sit till uh, I don't know 10:30, 11 o'clock, and then go. We're gonna go scout that willow stuff. Um, that I was telling you about because we got to get eyes on that because I think that's where the big ones are going to be um, So we'll, we'll give you a shout when we get out of there Cool sounds good man. If y'all shoot one, let us know. All right, brother. Good luck in the morning. All right. See you guys They don't have them. They don't carry jalapenos in South Dakota. They're pepperoncini they Make for a good pizza we gotta, we gotta kill a deer to get a pizza. I'm doing well, how are you? We had a little delay in the morning here having to air up the tire again, but I decided to make a bold move and push way back in some cover, just trying to make something happen. That buck from the night before had me as hype as I'd been since eating pizza in the backcountry in Nebraska. And with the willows being thick as thieves in there, I knew there was plenty of deer bedding nearby. I decided to sit up high overlooking them to learn more about the daily habits of these oversized jackalopes. That front buck doesn't look bad at all.
grab my pack and uh, catch up with you tonight.
So it's right behind a willow. Ah, oh, she broke a blade right mm -hmm. there. We are two different people, so we're gonna approach this in two different ways. You think we should go? I absolutely think we should go. With the rain coming like it is, okay. uh, I think that we should put a plan in place and see what we find right there. He's one lunged at the most. And I feel like that is not a good thing. I think he's jugular. Then, is he dead? Possibly. We waited a few hours and made the long drive super late in the evening, immediately cutting the big bucks running track, which we used the majority of the night. We found minimal blood before we jumped the buck from his bed. What a nightmare, man. This is where he came up last night and we followed him up in daylight. It's kind of actually ridiculous to think about that we did this in the dark as fast as we could to get up here before he kind of took off across the great open here. But we jumped him down there and he went way up here. We didn't know for sure if he was in this stuff or not. So that was about the time we decided to give up. Uh, I got up here, didn't have a powerful light, but couldn't see him for, you know, 70 yards or so probably no eyes or anything at least so uh we're just kind of looking through here to see if he bedded up in here and fell out or something and then we'll probably take off across the open here and walk a couple miles trying to find him in this direction about done it's kind of one of those things where it's probably relatable to a lot of people but he works so hard at this this is the hard one of the hardest ways of hunting that I can think of. You put a lot into it. We focused all day yesterday. We worked really hard on the maps to make sure we were set up in the right spot. And I had a good feeling it was gonna happen. And it did. And then, you know, the moment of truth, the last moment of the whole equation falls apart. No matter how much you practice, which I have practiced a lot over the last few years, I've worked on my, my arrow setup, my broadhead setup, really try to fine tune that and dial that, shoot a heavier arrow. And if you just hit them in the wrong place, it doesn't matter what broadhead you're shooting, you, you hit them in the wrong place. And that's what I think I did. That deer scrambled up this thing last night, and I think went across the open plains here for a ways, and we didn't find him down there. I don't know, but lack of penetration and everything else kind of tells me that he's probably has a good chance of making it. So. I guess if there's some kind of silver lining, that's it. Trying to keep my head up, I made my way back over to KC mid-morning to see if I could help him scout.
I quickly rendezvous with Tyler and we construct a blueprint for how I'm going to get in the way of this buck. If it doesn't go good, we're gonna, we'll follow the ridge on the round and meet you out at the truck. Sounds good. Hey, smoke a deer. We'll try. No, there's a road here, but I think there's two to be killed up in this stuff. Shot over him. <sighs> Did what I thought they were going to do. Should have set up in that cedar, but all those does were right there, so we'd have bumped them. Tell Tyler to stop. We're gonna call him the, the giant, the giant, 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 giant. Giant bug, giant bug. Don't move, he's looking this way. Answer your phone. What? There, there, we just spooked a giant out the other side. Yeah. You see him? Okay. Go ahead and come up. They're they're gone. That is a, what I would call a soft spook. At least. We'll go to Tyler. We'll go to you. Best thing to do is just to try to be some help and scout for you guys a little bit and just maybe dink around and bird hunt a little bit. What do you mean? I just think probably the best option is just to punch a tag. I just don't know. And I'll mm. probably go back over there and look for him a few times and see if he's still moving around or yeah. if he's dead or whatever. But we walked a lot of miles today. Dude, that's tough. But yeah. Well, whatever helps you gain the peace of mind and feel good about it. I will always appreciate the scouting help. And as soon as <laughs> how I can't find any big deer. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. I can feel the sun beginning to set on this hunt. I have got to get this bow problem figured out. It was my last night in South Dakota hunting with Tyler and KC. I'm back to the original property I started on. I feel like I made a huge mistake when I left this place. There's more buck sign in the 10 acres I've looked at since I got back here than on the acres that I walked through on those other spots. I didn't feel like uh, the big buck thing was probably going to happen here. So I left it and that was a mistake. But this is, this is going to be an interesting experiment because if anything comes in tonight, it's going to probably be in trouble because I would like to have some meat in the back of my truck when I drive home. And if it comes in, it's either going to be like a 19 yard shot or like a 7 yard shot. So it'll be kind of a miracle if you don't get busted, but who knows. Anyway, it feels like a deer kill.
unfortunately, that was Tony's last hunt of the trip. I felt pretty bummed for him that he didn't get a deer, but KC and I were definitely dialing in this area that I had spotted some bucks a few days before. And after you and I both spent so much time in this area having those buck encounters, I'm really starting to build some confidence in this spot. The bow really seems to finally be shooting well, and it's going to be nice to sit in a tree and wait on these big bucks to come back to bed.
That's how we do it. Damn it! Oh, we've been running around all week, man. <laughs> then we just came and got in the saddle and sat in a tree and did the thing I just don't want to do and sit in one place. And <laughs> oh, ripped him at 37. Dude, thanks for seeing that deer. Dude. I'm so glad I made the saddle adjustment, dude. dude. If I hadn't dude. moved my platform up and got up here higher, like, it wasn't gonna happen. I wasn't gonna be able to get that shot. I was so worried that he was about to dip in those those plums right there and follow his buddy. Yeah. What's up? What up, bro? God gum it, dude. We got a dead buck. Did you see it fall? I didn't see it fall, so I'm sorry, but <laughs> they die when you put it there, okay? Like <laughs> I was watching one just right when you texted that that got hit real good. Really? I was walking, watching the Nebraska, my Nebraska buck. Mm, yeah, that's that's uh, kind of where I hit him. He's a he's a medium buck for sure. He's like a two or three year old eight point, tight and tall. Dude, congrats, man. I know that's a good feeling. Thanks, man. It is. I really was feeling like I wasn't going to kill a deer on this trip. All right, we're about to get down and look at the arrow, and then we'll uh, let you know. Good job, dude. Thank See you. ya. See ya. He said it's a rip right behind the shoulder. <sighs> All right. I got my shakes a little bit down. My knees are still shaking a little bit, but it ain't too Cold weather, man. Yeah. All right, let's go take a picture of the arrow. Look at this guy. Look at that. That's a jackalope. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta put that up there so they see. I didn't even make it through the dirt. That was the place to be. Hey, Gummit, where's the breakfast pizza? <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> Couldn't find the grouse? Oh, dang, dude. So I decided to make a mid-morning move on my platform set up and got up higher in this tree and it was the move to make because I shot that deer right down, right here. He walked the top of this draw and ate plums for like or plum leaves for like 10 minutes. And dude, yeah. talk about some crisp. Yeah, <laughs> it's crispy. Bet. Bet. It is crispy. Was that a 35 yard shot? Uh, 38, 37. I have my pin at 38. Shot at 37. Ripped him. It's bad as The as arrow it looks gets. good. It's about as good as it gets. <laughs> There's hair and, and blood all over right there. So it's a, it's a, it is a lethal ethical shot. That's for sure. <laughs> I told you 20 yards from the tree. Oh, yeah, he's nice, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. What a toad. Woo! Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. He's actually quite a bit bigger than I thought he was. Oh, yeah. And you ripped him, dude. Corn fed, man. Toad. It's a, this week has been a tough deal. Yep. You know, South Dakota is like the hunt we look forward to all year long about just being a party, yep. you know? And it was not a party. No, it was started, uh, started off with my buck uh, making it the opposite of a party. It actually, actually was a pity party. It was a pity party, that's yeah. what it was, yeah. After Nebraska, uh, this hunt humbled us pretty good, I think. It did, yeah. Because uh, we were feeling it we after feeling Nebraska. Cool. And then this definitely put us in our spot, which, man, I'll be honest, not to just step all over your toes here and what you want to say about your buck, but I feel like uh, to be humbled is a, is a blessing. Absolutely. I think. So I was, I've been thinking about that this week a little bit. It's like, uh, if you just killed them every time, A, it wouldn't be that fun. 
because part of the fun is not knowing and you know sometimes not feeling like you're going to have it happen and then the last second things change and then you know the other part of it is like i said it's just a, a, a blessing to keep you in check for sure so yeah this definitely is a class up from what i shot here last year awesome you man. know he's he's just beautiful buck dude and he, he is, was man. look at the size and the, the throat the cape on. I love it when a plan comes together. And with the A-team all here to share the hunt with, it's even more of a joyful moment. Shooting big bucks is fun. Dude, what's neat is his big side was on the back side, so I never really got a look at it, you know? But when there's things to be learned. Dude, we just came and got in the saddle and sat in a tree and did the thing I just don't want to do. Failures to overcome. Oh, that's sick. There's a good chance we don't find that deer. And happy times to share. Overall, it's a more holistic experience. South Dakota deer seem to make better table fare, and I can't tell if that's actually true or just a placebo ingrained into my sense of taste by how enjoyable it is to chase wild deer in wilder places.